Hi ladies, welcome back to Keeping Your Eyes on the Prize. My name is Aida Sanchez and today my lesson is going to be titled Stay Focused. And we've all gone through, probably it's been what, like three weeks, two or three weeks that we've all been quarantined and we can all look back and we can say God has been faithful. And we can still say that God is in control, and He is. All those, all of us who know Christ as our Savior, and we know what Scripture says, He is in control. And uh, so right now, I'm going to go ahead and pray, and then we'll begin. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today, and for your leading, and for your love that you have for us. And Father, I just praise you because you are an almighty God. You are in control. You are all-powerful, all-knowing, and omnipresent. And I just thank you for loving us the way that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, normally, I do a Bible study, and then I do, like, maybe a product review, or I do some kind of recipe or nutrition. But the Lord put in my heart this time to do another Bible study. So, I'm, you know, when He does little things like that, it just excites me because... You know, I want to do what he wants me to do. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm sure that right now we can all look back and we can think of how God has been faithful. And each one of us has a lesson that he's teaching us. And I can, if you can think, lady, how awesome he is, how while he is in control, allowing things to happen, putting people in positions, even the conflicts that are coming in that we, well, we don't agree with this or we don't agree, all that. He is still in control. He's allowing these things. And at the same time, he's in your home and he sees what each one of us are going through. He sees the problems we have, the struggles we're facing, decisions having to be made, uh, whatever it is. He is still in control and he loves us so personal. And uh, just like that, the, the story in, in Scripture where it talks about the sheep, when one goes away, he, you know, he goes after that one. Even though there's hundreds, he goes after it. That's how much he loves us. So I think that is, is a reminder of us that while we're here at home being quarantined, having our own little problems and having our situations, and don't get me wrong, I mean, I know some of y'all, we have lost jobs, our, our hours have been cut, uh, maybe some of y'all have your different health problems. Maybe you don't have the corona, but you have other situations that have come up. A uh, family, a dear friend of mine, her mom had to be put in the hospital with heart surgery. So all these little things, God is in control. So um, I know that all these things are leading us back to Him. That is His primary goal, is that we would all go back to Him, always. That because He wants a relationship with you. You just remember that, that He wants a relationship with you. Now, during these times of quarantine, I want us to stay focused, and God wants us to stay focused on the things that are important that are going to make a difference for eternity. And right now I'm going to read off of Luke chapter 10 verse 38 where it talks about Mary and Martha. Verse 38, Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha, and that's talking about Jesus, that is, you know, he went in, welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and he approached him. And she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. So during these times that we're at home and we can get caught up with so many things, well, I'm, you know, now that I'm home, I'm gonna clean this and clean that and clean this. And I hope ladies, and I really believe that most of us are trying to make time for our family, especially if you have little ones and some of y'all are homeschooling that have never homeschooled before and that's been a challenge. So, you know, like I said, it's all these that the Lord is allowing in our families. But yet, I want you to remember to stay focused on Jesus, to stay focused on Him. Another scripture I want you to, uh, we're going to look at right now is Proverbs chapter, 
4, verse 23 through 27. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth, and put perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight forward, stay focused, and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet. That means think where you're going. If you're leading into a direction that is not wrong, but it's not the best, it's it's okay. Then you're you're compromising. You're leading. You're you're guiding. You're you're allowing yourself to get further from the Lord, and that's not what God wants. Ponder the path of your feet, and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right nor to the left. Remove your foot from evil. One thing I wanted to encourage you is, I'm sure a lot of you are doing it, maybe not, but to keep a journal during this month or whatever, because you're going to look back and you're going to think, okay, because only the Lord knows what's going to happen. We don't know if things are going to get better or if things are going to get tougher, but we do know that right now he has already put us in. We've all, we've all had to make arrange, you know, changes, wear masks everywhere. Uh, six feet away, you know, you can't go here, you can't go there. These limitations, you know, we are all having to make those adjustments. So what has the Lord taught you in making these adjustments? Perhaps being more grateful because we can't have the things that we normally have uh, or do the things we normally do. It's mostly doing things that we normally just get up and go here and go there and we can't do that uh, to the stores that we want. I love Hobby Lobby. I'm I miss that place, but that's okay. <laughs> and then uh, also, Mary, okay, going back to the Bible study, is uh, let us stay focused on the Lord in these troublesome days. Seek to serve your family and to bless other people. Now, this is where I want to challenge you. Is But if you're not in God's Word, and right now, there's really not too, you know, you can stay in God's Word. But, and if you might say, well, I just don't have, you know, uh, that desire, Ida. I, I really don't want to be in God's Word. I have bitterness. I have anger. Uh, there's other things coming into my life that I really don't have that desire. And so what do you do? Just, I don't have the desire, so you don't do it? No. You do it anyway, because that will come. If you abide in Him... I mean, ladies, even if, just make yourself do it. Just like some of y'all are so encouraging about exercise. Some of y'all are so disciplined in exercising. You will get up in the morning. You will do whatever. That same discipline and, and desire that you have for your physical body, you do it for your spiritual. And I promise you, you will see results. And you will hear the Lord speaking to you. Uh, in your spirit, in your heart, and guiding you. Just like he says in Isaiah 58, that he will guide you continually. He will do that, ladies. I promise you, he will do that. When you're in a group of people, with people, and maybe they're your friends, or you're texting, or you're in a Zoom group, uh, and and you're Christians, and, we're, and you're talking about what's going on, ladies, I encourage you, try to focus back on what God what God's view in, is in all this. And a lot of times we can give out human advice, just regular, you know, well, you know, this and that, yeah, and, and I think this should happen. And if they don't do this and this, you know, let, you know, we have to be wise and pray about, take everything to the Lord, pray about, Lord, our country needs this. Our country needs you, Lord. That is the main goal of all of this, is that the Lord is seeking to bring more souls to Him. And those of us who are seeking Him, He wants us to get closer to Him. We, he wants to have such a relationship with you, ladies. He wants to be your best friend. If He's not your best friend, it is not His fault. It is something you're not doing. If there are things that you're allowing right now while being quarantined, maybe watching something on a show, it's not bad, but it's causing you covetousness. It's causing you to, your, your mind is not being focused on the Lord. If during this time, do all that you can 
to get back to the Lord because he wants a relationship with you and that's the most wouldn't that be awesome if we had like a revival and among Christians and lost people coming to the Lord right now I heard that there's like the the selling of Bibles is over hundred and sixty two percent people are now realizing you know things are happening the Bible said things like this would happen so it's all you know God is, is working all things for good they're all is he's working all things for good so when you give your friends advice and direction make sure you give them godly advice because in Romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 it says be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that which is good acceptable and perfect will of God remember that there is also a spiritual side to all of this you know I know that uh, there's there's a there's a physical side you know masks and and staying in line stay away from people don't hug don't do this don't do that you know but there's also a spiritual side to all this you know Satan just wants us to look be discontent uh, envious uh, or whatever it may be he just wants us he doesn't want us to focus on what God is doing he wants us to focus on what we're not get what we can't get what, and that's just the way he is was with Adam and Eve he told them you know that be fruitful and multiply and you will have dominion so we you know Satan doesn't want you to remember that you know you have that authority in Christ but instead of thinking that he wants us to focus on well and especially Satan will make you know the enemy will cause us to think well you're not as pretty as so and so you're not as thin as so and so you don't your fat your husband doesn't make enough money as so and so or your kids aren't like so and so's kids all that that's the way Satan worked in Eve's life you can be just like God you can be you can know these things that God knows God's just hiding these things from you that is a lie that is a lie and until we get into God's Word more and abide in his word you will be deceived because the truth will set you free God's Word is truth if you're in it if you're abiding in him when you get those thoughts and when your kids get them when your husband gets them you can encourage it. okay guys let's let's stay focused let's back on what God's Word says because some people you know you don't want I one thing I've always tried to encourage myself is you don't want to be like the average Christian ladies you don't because the average Christian is not doesn't even read their Bible the average Christian does not share Christ they just say I'm saved that's good enough for me you don't want that you want to say Lord I, I want to build a relationship with you and so that is what we want to do is we want to build a relationship with Jesus Christ uh, and also remember when we are in a crisis like this God always always has something he wants to show you something he wants to show you because he is a personal God this is affecting all of us around the world and this is not just the US this is all around the world but at the same time like I said earlier he wants to focus on you there is something that he's been t speaking to you about whatever it is whether it's your prayer life whether it's your attitude whether it's comparing yourself whether it's anger whatever jealousy whatever it is we all have something ladies all of us have an issues and things that we have to humble ourselves before God which is you may say I don't have time for God's Word it's no it's not that at all you don't make time it's not important to you you have not have that relationship that you're missing out and Satan's going to do everything he can and you know where he works in your life I know how he works in my life all of us do and that's why we need to stay focused on him and if you have bitterness in your heart then you need to remember you the first John 1 9 if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness so there is no excuse we we can confess it and we move on 
we need to, because Satan's going to want you to, con, con, you know, he, he condemns us. There is therefore no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. If you confessed it before God and you've confessed it before man, you're clear, ladies. And Satan's going to keep bringing it up. You can't. That's where meditation and memorizing comes in. you got to say it out loud. you got to believe what God's Word says because if you have trusted Christ as your Savior, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. And those verses will come to your mind because He will bring things to your remembrance, the things that He's taught you, that the Lord has taught you. Remember, we all have a divine calling. I mean, what, what that means is He has a purpose for you. He's giving you those gifts. You know what they're good at. He's given you gifts. He's given you talents. He's given you some character qualities that is can benefit someone else and bless someone else. So all that is for a divine purpose. And when we see him, which I believe is soon, you know, we are either going to be excited or we're going to be like, you know, regret, you know, oh my goodness, why didn't I do it? Lady, it's never, it's, it's never too late. Do it now. Start doing it now, what you feel God has called you to do. Maybe you haven't trusted Christ as your Savior. Uh, maybe you, you don't, the Bible says that we are all sinners. Maybe you don't see yourself as a sinner, but we are. If we have lied, if we have thought a bad thought, if we have cheated, if we have uh, had impure thoughts, motives, whatever, that is a sin. That is a sin because Christ's word, said, the word of God says that if we disobey the law in one point, we are guilty of it all. We're all sinners. And the payment for sin is death. That was Jesus Christ's death on the cross. When he died on that cross, he did it willingly, ladies. Willingly. Because he already knew what was coming at the end. He knew that he was going to rise from the dead, but he knew there was a cost that he had to do. He was willing to suffer. They nailed his hands, his feet, his, they, they, his, they poked his side, crown of thorns on his head, and the agony that he went through. But he did it for us. He did it for us. No one else could do that, no matter how much they love us. Jesus was. Jesus is God's son, sinless, perfection. He came to die for the sins of the world, and he, be, he died for us. And the Bible says that if you believe he died that for you, make it personal, that you have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, that means anybody, I don't care if you're in jail and you're watching this, I don't care if you're about to commit suicide, whatever. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Ladies, God forgives every sin. There is not one sin that God says, no, nope, that one is, no, can't do it, no. The only thing that will keep you from heaven is if you refuse to receive what he did for you. And ladies, don't do that. Don't refuse that payment, that love that he showed for you. You receive it in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, I believe that. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose from the dead, that you are God, and that my sins are paid for. Because ladies, if we, there's a verse in the Bible that says that if righteousness came through good works, then Christ died in vain. Why did he die? He died for us. So the only way you can get to heaven is believing that he died for you. He loves you. And you know, he lives for you. He rose from the dead. We just got through celebrating Easter. That's the Christian's biggest, that's the, the, that's, the, that's our reason for living. That's our reason why we go on and why we want to serve him. And that's the reason why you should continue and to have hope. Our hope is in him. So if you have not trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, oh, I pray that you do. And I know, like I said, I was going to normally, I normally do like something else, like a, on food or whatever, but God put in my heart to do this. And I know there's a reason. Right now, so many people are hurting. And right now, people need Jesus that have never searched for the Lord. So I'm encouraging you to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. I, even if there's one person that trusts Christ as their Savior through this, oh my God, that would be awesome. 
because Lady Scott died for you. Jesus, God sent his son Jesus to die for your sins. He loves you. He sent this word, the Bible, to us. This is his love letter to you. He, this is, for, there, there's over, you know, 8,000 promises in here. And Satan does not want us to believe them. He wants us to be blinded. He doesn't want us to know what we have in Christ. So if you would just please, I encourage you, trust Christ as your Savior. That's the most important thing. The second is, ladies, be in God's Word. Don't settle for what the world gives. Watch what you, the music you listen to. Watch what you watch on television. Don't protect that relationship. Be not conformed to this world. We don't have to be like the world. We don't. Now, I know there's some things we're, you know, we do or whatever, but between you and God, you know what's keeping you away from Him. You know what's keeping you from having that solid relationship. And if you have not trusted Christ, it is only by trusting Him as your Savior and nothing that you can do. No good works, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourself. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You are, God wants us to boast on Him and nothing else. So ladies, I'm just going to go ahead and close here. And I also want to say one more thing that the Lord puts in my mind is to praise Him. You praise Him in the midst of these times. Let your children hear you praise Him. You praise Him even when you feel you don't want to. I cannot tell you what that does. Praise Him. Do your at night. Go try to go to bed. Your, your, your PM praises. And, and just when you're in bed, Lord, I thank you. I praise you for what you did today. You helped me to make a decision that was so hard. You helped me to, to do this or do that. And he gives us the grace. He's amazing. He loves you. So ladies, I just want to close here. And I want to encourage you to stay focused. And remember to keep your eyes on the prize, which is the calling of God in Christ Jesus. May the Lord richly bless you. And we will see you next week. Bye-bye.